SpotlightMediaStudios.com. Welcome to Education Unfiltered. Here is Mary Stucco. Hello, this is Mary Stucco with Education Unfiltered, where we talk about all things higher ed, and that takes on a lot of different forms. And today, I am super excited to uh, introduce Bridget Sadenwater, who is the Vice President of Greater, Greater Michigan Construction Academy. Welcome, Bridget. It's nice to meet you. Well, hello. Uh, thanks so much for having me on today. Yes, you're so welcome. So tell me tell me a little bit about what Greater Michigan Construction Academy is. Wonderful, yes. Uh, so it's kind of a mouthful, Greater Michigan Construction Academy. So we often use our acronym, GMCA. So um, so later as we're, we're talking, if I mentioned GMCA, I thought I would kind of do that description up front. But Perfect. we are a nonprofit school. Um, we have campuses in Midland, Saginaw, and Lansing. And uh, we are all about hands-on, skilled trade um, training. And so um, we offer certifications rather than um, degrees, so we're a little bit different in that way. And um, it's really a great opportunity um, for for students who are interested or people who are interested in uh, getting started in the trades. Um, We have some great programs, and there there are multiple places to to learn about trades, but uh, we're really proud of our our facilities and our training, and so I'm excited to to have a chance to, to share that with you today. Yeah. Now tell me, is this something that's just for people who are already out of high school? Or are you working with students who are currently in high school? How does that go? Sure. Well, you know, we um, you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out what the best career path is for us. So at GMCA, we strongly encourage career exploration. So we do some things with middle schoolers and high schoolers. Um, at our Lansing and Midland locations, we can partner with some community partners and put on some summer construction camps. And you know, it's lots of fun. We um, allow the youth to try different things they might have never thought of before. You know, maybe two hours, they'll be doing an electrical project. Then they'll switch to a carpentry project. Then welding. It's just really exploration. So we really encourage those kind of opportunities. I think it's a great way for, for people to kind of um, figure out what they might be interested in. And then we do some things with um, with high schoolers. We partner with in some of our neighboring communities. We provide some work-based learning experiences with 11th and 12th graders, get them started working on pre-apprenticeship training while they're still in high school. But really, uh, the majority of the things we do are with adults. So although we do have some youth programs and we're excited about that, a lot of our training is with adults. Um, and so, you know, it's not too late. Um, we have some right out of high school who come to us. Uh, we have others who maybe have, have tried some different things and, um, and come to us with a little bit of experience. And then we also have some students who are, um, you know, have quite a bit of experience and, and are, um, are re-careering. Maybe they've always wanted to get into the trades and this, uh, you know, life has presented itself with an opportunity and they're ready to get started. So, um, so we, have, we have lots of success stories of people who have, um, you know, put in the time and the hard work to, to learn a trade, but um, are really, uh, really excelling now in a, a skilled trades career. So Excellent. So why are the trades a great career option? You know, right now, the construction industry is full of opportunities. Uh, builders, contractors are begging for talent. You know, there were a lot of openings in years past, but now there's, there's even more. Um, just like a lot of industries, there are even more opportunities right now, So, which is great news for someone who's interested in getting into the skilled trades. Um, you know, at GMCA, we train in 11 different trades, so things like electrical, plumbing, pipe fitting, carpentry, um, HVAC, masonry, industrial maintenance mechanic, welding, just to, to name some off. Um, so really focused on those hands-on um, opportunities. And it's really a great fit for someone who wants an active, hands-on career. So, you know, there's lots of promotion opportunities as well. So someone might start out in a hands-on role and at some point in their career kind of move into more of a leadership role, a team leader, a foreman, or maybe a project manager. But it's a great place to start in the construction industry and, um, you know, there's uh, great paying jobs, um, and there are lots of jobs. So, um, so we're really excited about it. You know, the key is to be successful in the construction industry. You know, employers are looking for people who are eager to learn, uh, willing to work hard, and they're dependable. 
Um, and it mentioned wages. They're pretty good to start, but then, you know, with additional training and certifications, there's an opportunity to make uh, a great a great living in the trades. So um, one of the things that always strikes me is when talking to some of our students or some of our graduates, and they'll talk about um, some of these different projects that they've worked on, and um, they kind of have that mentality of, you know, I built that, or I uh, did the electrical in that building, or they kind of have a sense of, uh, of pride in their work. Uh, so working in the skilled trade is a, like a positive way they're impacting their community. It's, um, it's great to see. So as you can see, I'm very passionate oh, about yes. the skilled trades and the opportunities. Yeah, no, I can totally understand. I can see it, you know, your pride and and all that hard work that you put into as part of a team building something. Um, So how would a person get started training for a skilled trade career? Well, I mentioned some of those career exploration types of things went for youth, um, but for adults, um, if you're interested, one of the... um, Great places to start is to um, we well, can do you know do some exploring online, but um, but to really reach out to some of the training organizations, and most are very willing to give you a tour. I know at GMCA we do um, tours all the time where we'll meet with individuals and um, sit down and talk about their interests and what they're looking for. Uh, walk around the building, check out some of the labs. Uh, maybe talk to some of the instructors and um, and really talk about what the path would be to get started. Um, there, you know, it, it's really pretty streamlined uh, with us, especially um, there's a simple enrollment form, and we can talk about kind of getting individuals started. Our semesters start. Um, twice a year. So we start out a group in August and then we start out another group in January. So, um, so it's, you know, it's pretty, if you are interested, um, we definitely would love to talk to people. Um, and it's pretty easy just to get started by contacting us. And if somebody wants to contact you about getting started, how would they do that? Well, um, one way is they could give us a call. Um, so our, um, phone number is 989 832-8879. Or you could check out our website. We have lots of great information um, on our website, and we do have some, you know, contact us forms, too, if you like what you see and you want to speak with someone. And our website is gmcami.org. Very good. Now, how does it look for the student? Are they doing most of their classroom work? Are they like in a lab doing work or are they spending a lot of time listening to lectures or is there a a combination? Well, uh, that's a great question. There is a combination. So kind of to take you through the format, um, our adult students come one night per week for about um, 40 weeks out of the year. So we do take a few weeks off in the the summer um, and have a break. But um, but basically, it's two 20-week semesters, and so um, it does take about four years to u- earn all of your certifications for training, which would, um, on the training side of it, take you to a, a journeyman level. Um, of course, there's on-the-job work that needs to be, um, you know, tallied at that time, too, so it's a little bit, uh, it's not just the training. There, we, we also um, love for our students to, to work a job in the trades, too. It's kind of a win-win. But... Um, but anyway, they, uh, so the students would come, and during that four-hour class, one night a week, they would spend some time in the classroom. Um, our instructors are great at sharing stories and helping to review the, the content so the student can be successful po- uh, passing their uh, written assessments. But then we do spend quite a bit of time in the lab working on different projects and hands-on activities. In fact, to pass each module, um, which our training is a, it's module-based, so pass each module on a topic, a student will have to pass the written assessment, but also uh, be able to demonstrate that they um, have a strong grasp on the hands-on side of it. So it's definitely, there's a little bit of time in the classroom, but we do spend a lot of time working on hands-on projects. Very good. Now tell me a little bit about your instructors. Sure. Um, We have a great instructor team. In fact, that is one of the keys in, um, to, to really be successful. The passion that our instructors have when they're working with the students um, really makes a difference. And so we have pretty small classes. Um, it depends on the trade, um, but most are probably around that 
well, there's some of there maybe more eight to ten students, other classes, some of our a little bit more popular um, trades are maybe more like 15 to 17, so, so pretty small classes, but they definitely have a chance to, uh, to bond with their instructor with these small classes and work on a lot of projects. But our instructors are all journeyman level in their trade or some, you know, even more advanced. Um, they have at least uh, five to seven years experience beyond that journeyman level. And we do have some instructors who've been, um, you know, in the trades for 20, 30 years who are uh, at that point in their career where they really want to give back and build the next generation. So it's great for an individual um, who is retired as well, recently retired. It's a way to kind of ease into retirement to give back and still be involved in the construction industry. But instead of on the job, it is um, in our classroom, in our labs. That's impressive. So what types of certifications can students earn? Uh, yes. So, um, again, as I mentioned, it isn't a diploma, but certifications. And we're all about um, helping the students earn those nationally recognized industry credentials. So we partner with an organization called NCCER. Um, and uh, they're based out of Florida. And, you know, I can give you some information about them. But sure. basically the... the um, the great thing about it is that this is a standardized uh, program. It's been approved by the Department of Labor and Office of Apprenticeship as an approved program, and it has both um, hands-on elements and um, the written um, testing or assessments. So um, the great thing about it is that because it is nationally recognized, you know, uh, hopefully a student um, you know, gets their training and begins their career and stays in our communities. But sometimes life takes us in different directions. And so if, if for some reason an individual at some point um, wanted to move to a different part of the state or to a um, you know, different part of the country, um, they could take their credentials that they've earned, and those are recognized um, across the country. So it really helps the students' training um, become portable and really you know, just increases opportunities for the individual. So, Very um, good. And so you said it usually takes a couple of years for people to earn certification, or does it vary depending on the field they're going into? It does vary. Um, so for our welding program, we actually, that's actually a one-year program, and, uh, but, but more intense. Um, so we found that because of the, um, you know, the, the structure of welding, and it, it is somewhat you know, repetitive in that that extra uh, practice with welds um, day after day really makes a difference rather than coming um, one night a week and then having uh, a lag until the next week. So we do have a little bit different structure for our welding program. It is one year, but it meets several times a week. Um, but for most of our trades, um, it is four years before you receive all of your certifications. But it's such a, a switch kind of from that traditional thinking where, um, you know, first I get the training, you know, then step two is I enter the job market, and, you know, when I'm done with my training. It's really um, structured to happen together. So, for example, um, some of our students come to us um, right when they, you know, when they start a job, but maybe their employer sends them, you know, they get hired and their employer sends them to us to, um, to say, hey, I'd like to get my new employee started training. And so, so that's one scenario. But sometimes individuals um, don't have a job yet, but they want to work in the trades, and so they'll start training with us. But um, we work with them on job placement, so if they are interested, we can help um, help get them opportunities to get into the trades. Um, so really, it's um, it's a wonderful way to to get started. And then so the the student then is basically through most of their training, they're taking classes with um, you know a training provider like GMCA. And they're working during the day. So that's another reason why our classes are in the evening. Okay. So that students can most, you know, work during the day in the trade and then just come one night a week for their training with us um, at GMCA. So really they don't have to choose between um, going to work or taking classes. We're structured so that they, it's, it's you know, easier for them to do both of those things simultaneously. Very good. Now, the trades have traditionally been male-dominated. How is that changing to include more women? You know, it's, it's true. Uh, years ago, uh, men really dominated the industry, but the number of women in construction is, is gaining. I mean, there's so many opportunities out there. Um, businesses really want to, um, you know, they need people. So um, 
it really, I think one of the reports that I read recently said, um, you know, currently about 10% of the construction workforce is women. But, um, you know, it can be a rough industry, but things are changing. Companies are looking to make their um, culture more welcoming to women. Um, and uh, and really actively recruiting more women in the trade. So at GMCA, we're looking to increase our number of female students, too. Um, it starts by getting the word out to the communities that there's a, you know, there are great opportunities in uh, construction for everyone. Um, so and sometimes we see uh, girls or women kind of self-select out because I don't think they know maybe enough about it and know that, that there really are some great opportunities. So we're very active in, in helping to get talk to schools and, and talk to the community about these opportunities for everyone. And our, our staff participates in, you know, women in construction groups um, like the Associated Builders and Contractors have a group called Logic. It's a women's group which brings women in the construction industry together to network and do some outreach and, and get involved in mentorship. Um, so um, those women who are entering the field have other women that they can talk to about their challenges. You know, sometimes it's subtle things um, that help women see there's a place for them in construction. So, for example, um, PPE, which are safety items, uh, like personal protective equipment. So, um, a lot of times, um, the, basically, they come in smaller or medium sizes. So, we try to have sizes that would um, be smaller, like properly fitting gloves, harnesses, hard hats, so that, um, you know, when women are about to use them, they're not to try them on for just our training purposes. They're not too big. So, we're looking at all angles. How can we make the industry more welcoming to everyone. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was Bridget Sadenwater, the Vice President of Greater Michigan Construction Academy. And this is Mary Stucco with Education Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you to Davenport University for sponsoring this podcast.